Welcome aboard, everyone. I hope you all are well. Sit back and fasten your seatbelt if you want to see how this mini panel for X Plane 11 works. We will be covering this topic in this video, and I'll be referring many times back to the first video on the FlightSim 2020 version of this mini panel, since this is version 2 of the original device. From the beginning, we have X-Plane 11, and then we have the mini panel. And making the connection between the two for us is a plugin called X-Plane Direct, courtesy of Curiosity Workshop, which you can download from the Patreon page. I will put the link in the description. There are two parts to it. The first part is the plugin itself, shown on the right. You put that under your Explain Resources folder. The part on the left is the interface class. You get it as a couple of Arduino source files. You build that code into part of your mini panel firmware. We all know about the data refs in Xplain, right? When you have access to the data refs and commands, you can control just about anything in Xplain. Through its interface, Xplain Direct lets your controller code manipulate a data ref just with reading or writing to a variable. Plus, you can trigger any command by a function call. The way it works is quite simple, but very powerful. Let's move on to the hardware. It hasn't changed a bit since the original version. It has three components. The ESP32 microcontroller, a 4.3-inch Nexion display, and a handful of rotary encoders. I'll keep this section very short and refer you back to the first video for more coverage. Although I would mention that I have started using an ESP Pro for debugging, which I will explain a bit in the design notes. The same exact hardware is supporting both FlightSim 2020 and Xplain. The hard work is all in the firmware. For Xplain, even the D4 aircraft have custom data refs, so it becomes necessary to have aircraft-specific code. For the current implementation, the panel has only two options one for a generic aircraft, and one for the Cebo Boeing 738. 
you need to select them manually. There are three operating profiles, FiteSim 2020, X-Plane Default, and the Civil Mod. Let's take a look at the default first. The user interface appears pretty much the same between the two sims. So again, I refer you back to the original video for details. The common pages are the Autopilot page, the Radios page, where we have the transponder control, which the FiSim 2020 doesn't have, and the Situation page. Like I said, the differences among the airplanes really show up here in the RPM gauges. It is a problem to be resolved. The edit explain pages are for controlling the GPS. Just like the photorealistic scenery in explain, we too apply photo imagery here. Here we have the buttons on the G1000 GPS represented on the touchscreen. And of course, we take full advantages of our encoders. Two of the rotaries are used as the FMS inner and outer knobs on the G1000. One for zooming the map in and out. And the last one is shared between up down and left right panning. The 12 soft key on the bottoms are also available on the touchscreen. They are a bit hard to tell which is which without the labels, but it is still beats dragging that old mouse around. Huh? And let's not forget the same options page. Two knobs on the left literally will give you the time of day. The time acceleration, but don't go overboard at this one. And at last, an explain only volume control. Yes, it does go from 0 to 11. You know what we do? Uh, put it up to 11. 11, exactly. One louder. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. Now, let's have a 30,000 foot view of how the code is organized. From the get-go, the main challenges are 1. The number of aircraft variants and 2. How to make a single code base to support two very diverse simulator interfaces. The original mini panel for FiSIM 2020 certainly was not designed with all that in mind. Well, in the end, the result is a retrofit that is somewhat messy, but it does work. If anyone remember from the original video, it has shown that we have three main tasks in the code. That part has stayed the same. To handle the very different types of data flow, we install a layer to shield the SIM interface from the task for both the input and the output. When the tasks need to send data to the SIM, they go through a common exchange. And to deal with the incoming SIM data, there is a likewise common collector to present a united front. But at this moment, the code does not have a tight abstraction layer to handle the same IOs yet. Well, how about the other challenge of managing aircraft variation? What we have in place is an object hierarchy. Aircraft or class of aircraft are organized into profiles. 
Under each profile is a collection of pages, which, to no surprise, correspond to the pages that you see in the panel. For example, the autopilot page. A page, in turn, includes a group of screen objects. A screen objects represent an element on a page. For example, the heading setting for the autopilot on the screen. It contains information such as the values of the heading and the explain commands to modify that value. So this allows objects to be shared or reused. You may recall this is the screen node design that was discussed in details in the previous video. All right, enough of that. Let's have one more show and tell of the features. Once again, we are back in the Cebu 738, descending into Lisbon, Portugal, and we are using the customized profile for this aircraft. Starting off with the autopilot page, as you can see, it tries to have a look and feel of the Boeing MCP. All of the frequently used buttons are jammed into the page, including the three lights up caution buttons. On this page, the four encoder can either be used to set the numbers on the top row or at the touch of the bottom row the text changes color to indicate the encoders are now attached to those items. The navigation page feels a lot less crowded. The, the four knobs here are obviously linked to our four encoders. The buttons in the center of the knobs are functional as well, and it is very handy to have these Displace Options buttons at the bottom. All the control here operate as you would expect in the cockpit. Next, the panel page aims for lights and other rotary controllable items. You can use the encoder to adjust the brightness for four categories of cockpit lightings, the panel, interior lights, the electronic screens, and the FMC. Then buttons for all the light switches from the overhead panel. We have ice protection here. Oops, we set up the master caution. Let's reset it. The rotaries are working double shift here. We can control the wiper speed. And separately, use this tool to dial in the setting for the cabin pressure. That wraps it up for the features of the mini panel. This also serves to demonstrate how a profile is used to support and explain aircraft that require lots of customization, such as the Cebu mod. So I hope you have found this interesting. This mini panel is not meant to be a immersive home cockpit, but then it doesn't require thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours to build, and it doesn't take up half of your room. I think the beauty in it is its bill of materials. Only has three items. I will leave you with a diagram of the list of the source files. The link to the file package is in the description. As you can see, we are currently using only a small fraction of the memory from the devices. That means there's room to grow in the future. Read the included design notes if you are thinking of building one. Thanks for watching. Have fun.